Today we will talk about worship and we have with us the founder of Victory and the president of Every Nation uh, Ministries, Pastor Steve Merle. Welcome Pastor Steve to the Leadership Podcast. Hey Dennis, I'm glad to be here. It's such a privilege and honor to interview you about this topic called worship. And through the years, many have misconceptions about worship and what they think about worship. What for you, Pastor Steve, is worship? You know, when you, Dennis, when we talk about misconceptions about worship, I think about the Samaritan woman recorded in John 4 who came to Jesus and she asked the question uh, that many uh, ask today or she thought about worship the way many people do today. And she said, should we worship in this place or that place? Mm -hmm. She indicated some mountains, various places of worship that were thought to be holy and sacred and that maybe they could find God in a certain place. And Jesus' response was interesting and it was a real foundational definition of worship. Jesus said that you Samaritans, you people worship what you do not know, mm -hmm. But we worship what we know. And so right from the beginning, worship is about a relationship. It's about knowing the person you're worshiping, knowing it, it, it's, it's not just knowledge like information, but it, as you read the rest of the text, uh, Jesus talked about the Father is seeking worshipers and, and that we worship the Father. And, and it all is about a relationship, not a place, a sacred building or a sacred mountain, mountain or something like that. But I think at the starting point of worship is relationship. Yeah, Pastor Steve, we grew up thinking worship is a playlist. Like as a worship leader, many don't know I, I led worship before when there were really? 50 people in church. <laughs> but uh, they, we... Uh, can we get a sample yeah. right now of your playlist? Maybe we could do a duet later <laughs> after the podcast. But uh, <laughs> Pastor Steve, a lot, of a lot of people think worship are songs. You know, you do two praise, you do two worship, and it kind of went to our lifestyle of saying worship is music. Yeah, and, and Dennis, music is a part of worship and music certainly helps us express our love to God and, and can help us uh, get our emotions and our body involved in worship. But a lot of us, a lot of our generation of Christians think of it in terms of a playlist and we mm -hmm. think of, we, we have people who say, well, I was late for church, I missed the worship, I got there in time for the sermon. And I think that shows a misconception of biblical worship because everything that goes on in the worship service is worship from the singing to the offering, giving of our resources to God in worship to the listening and the response mm -hmm. to the sermon. That's all worship. But again, we do think about just the musical part. And I think we miss out on the fullness uh, of what worship is and should be. Um, Jesus said that uh, we're supposed to worship God in spirit and truth. And I think we think in terms of we worship God in song. And yeah. uh, that's just a very, uh, very small part, an important part, but a very small part of worship. Yeah, it's very, uh, would like to know, Pastor Steve, when the Bible says we worship in spirit and in truth, what would that mean? How would that look like, worshiping in spirit and in truth? I'm not sure uh, in the time we have to discuss this, we have time for a... a an in-depth theological uh, dissertation on that. But I think it's in, in, in spirit, there's an internal side of that. There's, a, there's the, um, the soul side. There's the, the, the spiritual side of connecting with God. But that has to be rooted in truth, which mm -hmm. is the Word of God. And I think sometimes it's dangerous that in, in spiritual life, if it goes outside of the boundaries of truth and it's no longer rooted in clear doctrine and clear, uh, clear biblical theology, sometimes some worship practices can get a little strange. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if it's just the word, uh, there's got to be more than that. And I think when Jesus said in spirit and truth, there's it's sort of the boundaries of, of what our worship should be. Right. Pastor Steve, how do we develop a lifestyle of worship? That's a good place to go in the discussion because if worship is not just music, then we can worship outside of a church service on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and, and the rest of the day, Sunday, that we're not in church. And I, I think about what Paul wrote in Romans 12, that we're supposed to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm. And all throughout Scripture, sacrifice was a part of worship. But what Paul says is it's 
offering ourselves as a sacrifice. And then he goes on and says, that is our spiritual act of worship. And so spiritual worship is not just singing or bowing or raising our hands or something we do in a church service, but spiritual worship is presenting our bodies to God. We can do that Monday morning on the way to work. Mm -hmm. We can do that on, on Tuesday when we're when we're serving our family and we can do that when we go on Saturday down to the real life uh, feeding center and it's presenting our bodies to God is, is worship and, and again a good touch point every week is a worship service where we sing and we maybe bow down and we lift our hands and all that but that's a part of the 24-7 giving of our lives to worship and living our lives unto the Lord whether we sing or not uh, we still worship. Yeah, I think one of the things, Pastor Steve, that we, our culture would try to divide is between the sacred and the secular. And yeah. we think our work is a secular job while going to church is something that's sacred. That's why there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to worship. How would you address the divide between the sacred and the secular? Yeah, I think uh, the sacred refers to what's God's and what's set apart for God and, and what is sacred and what's sanctif sanctified and it's set apart for God. And I think when we see that all of life is set apart for God mm -hmm. and all of life is to be lived to Him, then it all becomes sacred. So my work can actually be, if I'm not a pastor, I'm a businessman, that could be, wor are you saying that could be worship and that's sacred unto God? Well, it should be. All right. And hopefully, whatever business or whatever we're doing with our lives, we're doing it unto the Lord. And, uh, and, and that is the hope that every one of us, and it's not just those who, like us, are... Our vocation is ministry. It's easy to see that as worship. That's a misconception to think that it's all automatically mm -hmm. unto the Lord because we can get as busy as anyone else and we can neglect prayer and neglect study and neglect doing even ministry unto the Lord. Uh, but I think um, that starting point is what Paul exhorted the Romans about. Let's present our bodies. And that's not a once and for all thing. That's an everyday thing. Yeah. Actually, usually more than every day. It's like an every hour uh, of response to present ourselves to God and then it can become worship and it can become something that really brings pleasure and honor to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Pastor Steve, you talk about how we can get lost in while doing what seemed like ministry work and not really worship. Uh, what would that mean and how would, would that be a warning for the people listening to this? Yeah, yeah and I, I think sometimes we talk about carnality or living in the flesh versus the spirit mm -hmm. depending on which translation we read and I, I think sometimes we can even do things that are spiritual and things that are really what God wants us to do but when we do it either unto ourselves ultimately the hidden motive is that yeah. someone would honor me instead of God or if we do it with the right motive but in our own strength we try to make something happen in our own energy instead of it in faith and trusting God. Whatever is not a faith is sin. So even if I'm doing the right thing with the right motive, mm -hmm. I have to do it with complete trust and reliance upon the Lord ultimately doing the work or, it, or it's not. It's not unto Him. And I think when we do it with the, the right thing, with the right motive, with mm -hmm. the right power source, yeah. then we present that and, and it's worship uh, to the Lord. See, it would be good to really have a regular heart check when we're doing things, what seemingly like we're doing things for God, but really in our heart, it's something else. Uh, Pastor Steve, when it comes to discipleship, what role does worship play at in making disciples? You know, again, we're back to the, the idea of worship. If we think in terms of a worship service mm -hmm. once a week, or even the what we call the worship part of that service, the music part, I think that's a great time to recalibrate our hearts every week. And I think when I go to a church service and I'm worshiping God through the music, oftentimes in, in one song I go from rejoicing to repenting about my attitudes because it's opening my heart to the Lord and then He's doing things. And then I go through the worship in the offering and then worship with the Word by hearing the Word preached. Um, and again, it's, it's building my faith. It's also tearing things out of my heart. Yeah. And so I think that corporate worship experience is a vital part of a discipleship journey. And being a disciple, I remember as a new believer, I, I, I started going regularly to church instead of sporadically. And um, 
it, I don't know that I would have become who I did without that component. Yes, I had a small group I met with as a new believer, as a teenager, but I also needed that corporate gathering, that mm -hmm. time of worshiping together with the church community. Uh, and it, was, it, was, it had its own role in my life. And then that Tuesday, small group with other people only my age, you know, seven or eight of us. And it was that one-two punch of small group discipleship and larger corporate worship that I think becomes like, it's almost like the two legs of walking with God. Yeah. And I think we need them both. Yeah, with the, uh, with the rise of Facebook Live and live streaming, a lot of people are saying I could just do a virtual worship inside my room and not really go to church. And so what you're saying is they're missing a big part of what worship really is. Uh, in the life of a disciple, in the life of a Christian, right? I think you, you and I both know the value of whether it's live Facebook or live yeah. streaming because we have a lot of church members who are on ships around the sea mm -hmm. and that is their worship yeah. time when they're away and I just uh, flew in from the Middle East. I was meeting with a lot of our 16 leaders from 16 nations in the Middle East and, and a lot of those people are out there and that That's the virtual church, church yeah. is better than no church. It's better when we're face to face with real friends and real church community, but when that's not available in restricted nations mm -hmm. and other situations. I know we have quite a few members who are older and they used to come actually go to church every week and now they're at home. They're they can't really move. They're in their late eighties and and that's life giving. But I think I think we both would tell someone if you can possibly physically be there to worship with your community, that's the best. Yeah. But we do have some options today with technology that are second best. Mm -hmm. So, but if you can be there, you have you need to be there. All right. Now, what practical tips can you share with our victory group leaders when it comes to worship? Practical tips. Practical tips. Maybe uh, what would be some of the things you were doing when you were developing a lifestyle of worship early on in your walk with God? You know, I I think with if we're talking about a worship service, mm -hmm. then. I just would encourage victory group leaders to be all in mm -hmm. and to it's that's it's harder today than ever because we've always got a phone and email is coming and a notice from Instagram or something but to put all that aside and set that worship hour or that worship hour and a half or however long that is and be fully focused and fully engaged and all in uh, in that moment. I think, it's, I think we need to do that because our hearts need it, our own souls need it, but also to set an example of those in our victory group that we're not, we're not there, you can, we can check the news later, and we can check the feeds later, but right there that fully taking that corporate worship time to fully focus on, um, well, you know, back to what Jesus said, we worship what we know and focus on that relationship and then I do think that carries us through the rest of the week um, that focus time of worship and and it does help us with the daily worship of presenting our bodies to God. Pastor Steve, does it really matter where you worship? Uh, Dennis, I think back to the question the Samaritan woman asked Jesus, should we worship on that mountain or that mountain? Jesus brought it back to relationship obviously with the mm -hmm. Father. Um, he said we worship what we know and then he says the Father is seeking worshipers and so I think um, if we can carry that relational idea a little further, you know, Joey Bonifacio always says discipleship is relationship. I think also worship is relationship. Uh -huh. And it's not just that we worship the Father. Back to the question of where, I think the where matters in terms of not a sacred building or a sacred mountain, but a sacred people. Mm -hmm. And I think we're designed to worship in community and it's corporate worship and we worship with our church family. And so to the question of does it really matter where I worship? I think what matters is that we worship with the people God's connected us with. That mm -hmm. we worship Him, but we do it together. And so if the, if, if the people God has called me to are worshiping there, then I don't need to be worshiping there. I need to worship together. Now, I can worship God alone on Monday morning when I present my body as a living sacrifice and on Tuesday and on Thursday or whenever. But when that corporate worship moment comes, it's important that I'm where the people God's called me to walk with. Not that those people are any better or better mm -hmm. worshipers than anyone else, but they're the people I'm called to. And worship is supposed to be a corporate experience, a together experience. How about uh, what you say about 
church hopping and shopping and seeing you know what church would really fit me and it goes on as a pattern for some of the leaders who might be watching this and maybe they went through the same process of of mm -hmm. hopping and still thinking about and contemplating about hopping churches I, I think there are some valid reasons to transfer churches mm -hmm. um, I think when heresy is preached I think when unethical and immoral things are going on but that's the exception mm -hmm. most people hop around and change churches because of a relational conflict and they don't know how to resolve it biblically and and I think that's not a good thing that's not a healthy thing to, to leave an unhealthy church environment where the word is not honored and where there's it's just stuff that's just not right. I think that's valid, but I think we've got to learn to work out relational conflicts. I think another, some people leave because they don't like the song selection. Or I've heard people say, I don't think we worship enough at our, at our church. I think we need more worship. And what they're saying is, I don't have a clue what worship is. <laughs> what they mean is, instead of four songs, I think we should have eight songs because they don't see anything of, about worship other than singing songs. Um, so I think we, 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 if we see worship biblically and have a, a right theological perspective of worship, I don't think we'll see as much church hopping because mm -hmm. of music style or how many songs or um, the actual individual worship leader who's on the stage because when we see it properly, it's no longer about any of that. Yeah. It's about worshiping the Father and all of these are simply vehicles and tools and, and ways that we can worship the Father uh, together and uh, and I hope I hope our focus is a hundred percent on him um, when we're going to a corporate worship gathering. Pastor Steve, it would be good I think to end this with a prayer. Can you just pray for our victory group leaders? Okay, yeah. let's pray. Lord, thank you for the amazing privilege of worshiping you. When we worship you corporately together on a weekly basis. Uh, but also thank you for the time that we can worship you every single day, no matter where we are no matter who we're with, no matter what our search circumstances are. Lord, right now we, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice to you. And Lord, we pray that you would receive that as spiritual worship. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that not just our Victory Group leaders, but our visitors, our members, uh, people who don't know you who walk into a Victory Group or a worship service, I pray, Lord, that uh, they would know you and yes. they would, uh, the same way you told the Samaritan woman, we worship what we know. Lord, thank you for the honor and the privilege of knowing you. And I pray that we would know you better. In Jesus' name, amen.